Today, from Manhattan, Kansas, the surging Big 12 Kansas State Wildcats, led by legendary head coach Bill Snyder, host the TCU Horn Frogs and versatile Trevon Boykin, who raced for three touchdowns last week in a win over Iowa State. It's a Big 12 showdown on Fox College Football. Could not ask for any better weather here in Manhattan, Kansas. TCU, they've been road warriors under Gary Patterson taking on Kansas State, being led by Bill Snyder, 12th consecutive sellout in the stadium, named after him. It's the Horn Frogs and the Wildcats about to do battle. And with that, we say hello and welcome Mike Morgan with you here in the Little Apple, Manhattan, Kansas. Today we showcase two teams, one in TCU, one of the top teams on the road over the last few years against Kansas State, nearly unbeatable at this venue one things both these teams share in common after getting off to rough starts they are playing their best football in the month of November as I bring in my partner former NFL lineman Brian Baldinger that's a good sign for both teams another good sign for Kansas State is that after having to break in not one but two quarterbacks they're both starting to gel and Bill Snyder said it's unconventional but it works and so Jake Waters is a starter but Daniel Sams can come in at any time and the fact is both these quarterbacks they're both capable of running it and running it well. They've combined for over 200 carries of the team's total offense uh, this year so far. And really, it all works in a team where it's a gusty, windy day. They're going to want to run the football. These two guys can both do it. Yeah, winds expected to gust up to 40 miles an hour. TCU has had a little bit of a quarterback shuffle of their own. But as we bring in the third member of our broadcast team, J.C. Pearson. J.C., whether he's playing quarterback or anywhere else on the field, Trevon Boykin must be accounted for. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. I think Trevon Boykin is the most versatile player in college football. I mean, he started at quarterback for six games. Now he starts at wide receiver. He can line up and play running back and even return punt and I think today with this being a must win game for TCU in order to keep their bowl hopes alive I would not be surprised if we see Trevon Boykin line up in all of those positions at some point to, in this game today. He is a lot of fun to watch no matter where he is at. It is unseasonably warm. 70 degrees in Manhattan, Kansas in November. Can you believe it? Horn Frogs and the Wildcats coming up next on Fox College Football. Fox College Football is brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price every day. And by Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck for 36 straight years. Continuing to file in, it is the 12th consecutive sellout at Bill Snyder Family Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas. The story weather-wise, well, it's dropped at gorgeous 73 degrees, but more importantly, a factor in the actual game itself, the winds. 40 mile per hour gust, Baldy. That's going to be a factor in the kicking game, the passing game, a lot to do with this game. It already started. I mean, Kansas State won the toss, and they elected to kick. Uh, use the wind right here, put their defense on the field, make TCU go into it, so... It's already factoring into the game. Six times these teams have met on the gridiron, dating back to 1922. It's the first time Gary Patterson, an alum of Kansas State, has come back to coach against his alma mater. Brandon Carter and B.J. Catalan back to receive the kick, and it will be unreturnable. It'll be first and 10 from the 25-yard line for the Horn Frogs. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors right stuff players to watch for TCU's offense and Kansas State's defense. Well, they were without B.J. Catalan last week in their win against Iowa State. He's a, a factor in the return game, especially at running back. He's their leading rusher. And Aaron Green filled in for him last week. He got a chance. He was big right up until the end of the game. And then Ryan Mueller leads the nation in sacks right now. Uh, so a lot of big time players on the field here today. One of those that you mentioned, B.J. Catalan, is just take a look at K.C. Paul. He struggled last week, even though the team won at Iowa State. Will throw on first down. Connects at the 30-yard line. That's Doxon, who's quickly becoming one of his top targets, the sophomore out of Mansfield, Texas. 
Well, Casey Pajol's got a strong arm, and so I was just watching him throw it in the wind before the game. When he was throwing to the side, the Doxon just caught it. The ball was sailing on him, and it was dying to the outside. So expect in the passing game a short passing game from TCU here to get started. It goes for five, second down and five. A four-wide look for TCU. Catalan motions. Paul Hall fires and completes a great job of holding on right at the marker. Roberts sticking the receiver that caught it. Josh Doxson, his second grab, a first down. Well, here's uh, Jonathan Truman right here. He's going to blitz on the play, and really it's just a question of can Paul Hall get the ball out of his hands before he gets in? And so what that was was an empty set. You saw right away that Kansas State is not going to let Paul Hall stand back here in an empty set and look at one of his five wide receivers. On first down, churning the legs and pushing forward is B.J. Catalan, who was hurt last week as we say hello to J.C. Pearson. Hey, guys, the wind down here is blowing pretty heavily right in the face of TCU, and it's kind of a swirling wind, too. And when I talked to the offensive coordinator, Jared Anderson, before the game, he said that he wasn't going to be hesitant to throw the ball. It's just how they throw it, short, quick passes. He doesn't want to get the ball up in the air and let the wind catch the ball and carry. J.C., Great stuff. Paul Hall does have a cannon. Throws short again. Complete at the 39 and dragging defenders forward is the junior Brandon Carter. Brandon Carter with his 24th reception of the year. And take a look. I mean, this is exactly what JC's talking about. I mean, here's Brandon Carter's going to run a little stop route in the zone right here, and the ball comes out real quick. Just a stick throw. Not in the air very long. The wind can't really affect it. That's the short passing game that Jared Anderson is talking about. And now we might see the short running game for TCU on third and two. This has been a problem spot for Gary Patterson's crew this year. Catalan bulldozing over a defender, and that brute strength should be enough for a first down. B.J. Catalan, who was out last week, such an important factor in the running game. And really, it was Catalan right here. I mean, Kent State is, is gearing up for that inside run. He takes uh, Blake Slaughter, the, uh, the middle linebacker there, and runs right over. Sometimes it's just uh, willpower, right? It sure, yeah. surely was How on that play. this morning, yeah. <laughs> he just pancaked Slaughter. He's kind of an undersized middle linebacker at 5'10", 225. Here's an empty set, so you should expect a pass. And now, does, how does Kansas State react to it when they're in that set? They bring the running back back into the backfield. Catalan between the tackles. In space. Got some running room there. And gallops for about four, maybe five. It'll be second and intermediate. B.J. Catalan came in today just 13 yards shy of 1,000 yards in his career. He played as a true freshman last year out of the uh, Houston area. On second and six, Paul Hall triggers and completes it at the 45 of K-State, about a yard shy of the marker, and there is Travon Boykin, his first reception, probably won't be his last. No, the kid has great hands. I mean, he really does. He catches everything. That's why we may see him in the punt return game as well. Of course, he was forced into action at quarterback when Casey Pahal broke his forearm this year. He's kind of done a little bit of everything for him and done it well. Now Aaron Green, the hero last week of this TCU offense, checks in at tailback. They feed him. Nowhere to go. That'll be short of the marker. He looked like he lost a half a yard. Ryan Mueller, a sensational story, a former walk-on who leads the nation in sacks. It's not just sacks, though. It's not just rushing the passer. It's all phases of the game. He's going to get inside here. He's coming right inside right now. He anticipates the play. He never stays blocked. He's like quick swim move right there. Defeated the blocker with that swim. Now he's right in on the play. 16 tackles for loss. That's second best yeah. in the nation for Ryan Mueller. He just picked up number 16. That's going to force TCU to punt it away. That was a huge stop. TCU had a pretty good looking drive goal. Perry to punt. Thompson to return. And a fair catch at the eight yard line. 
But a good opening stanza for the Kansas State defense. No lack of intensity in this game. Both these teams need a win to put themselves in better position for a bowl game. Ten oh four remaining in the first quarter of play. We just saw TCU seeing TCU first look on defense. We're looking at Chris Hackett, ordinarily a starter on the bench right now, and in his place, Derek Kindred, who made a lot of plays in that victory over Iowa State. Yeah, and Hackett's their second leading tackler on this defense. He had 11 last week in Ames, Iowa. First down to the ground, John Hubert. Ball squirts loose. Did they whistle him down? Yeah, I think I think that they haven't gave a signal yet. I rule at second down. Okay. Right. See, there's a corner blitz from Jason Verrett here. He comes in. Uh, two Aula's on the tackle here, and here comes Verrett. Yeah, it looked like yeah. the ball popped out late, but it was good seeing Verrett on the first play. Uh, coming on a corner cap blitz, they played without Verrett against Iowa State a week ago. He's a difference maker, an All-American. On second and 13. Pass is way overthrown and out of bounds intended for Tyler Lockett, the leading receiver as we yep. lead into our Academy Sports and Outdoors bright stuff players to watch for K-State's offense and TCU's defense. Well, Hubert's their leading rusher, so he's going to get a lot of action, a team that likes to run the ball. Tyler Lockett's their leading receiver. We'll see him against Jason Barrett. Uh, who has nine career interceptions, a lot of pass breakups, and Paul Dawson is their leading tackler. Really took over that position when they played Kansas this year, and he's done so much, he's never going to relinquish it. He's, listen, all over the field. As we take a look at Jake Waters, the quarterback here. Waters, a junior college All-American in the state of Iowa. And that's not really his game, trying to run out of trouble there. But a great job by TCU defensively. That's Tua Ua, two big plays on the drive. Well, Tua Ua started last week against Iowa State, and he was sensational. And here he is, he's all over the field again. I mean, here he is on the backside right now. He's just coming right down the line. And he's just a guy right now who's got a motor on a twist stunt. And that's the perfect call on a quarterback trying to step up. So we saw two negative plays that time from TCU's defense, and that's what they feast upon. Eccles Looper back to receive the punt. And it'll bounce out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Good field position coming up. Bill Snyder Stadium. They named it after him. A legend for this program. No score here in the early going. 8.44 remaining in the first quarter of play. No score here from the Little Apple. That man, Bill Snyder, one of the legends, one of the icons in college football coaching. When you think about it, it's so hard for a coach to stay anywhere anymore without being fired or moving on to another job. Bill Snyder has called Manhattan home for quite some time. He's racked up 100 victories. If you look at where that stacks him up in the Big 12, formerly the Big 8, some pretty good company there with Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer. Hall of Fame coaches is what, uh, exactly what Bill Snyder is himself. On first down, it's Aaron Green, the sophomore from San Antonio. Four yards for Green, second down and six for TCU. Well, it's interesting uh, as we look at Ryan Mueller there, the nation's sack leader, uh, who will be chasing after Casey Paul Hall and Trevon Boykin today. Hall has gotten off to a good start now. He's completed his first four passes in this uh, blustery conditions. To the air on second down. The quick slant. They love that route. They work it to perfection. And already Josh Doxson with three grabs. Well, this throw here, Okay, on the outside of this slant right now. It's like a Tiger Woods drive. I mean, it's just low and through the wind. All right, so you keep it low. You keep it away from the defender there. Kip Daly on the defense. And Baldy K-State plays a lot of zone coverage, so a lot of those quick underneath throws are going to be available to TCU all day. This is Catalan. 
Catalan finding some running room on the left side. Ty Zimmerman trips him up, but not before a gain of 11. Good to have number 23 back in the backfield if you're a TCU fan. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, he's averaged over almost five yards of carry this season. He's their most explosive back, most experienced back right now. So they've got a lot of options right here. You know, all of a sudden you start looking at Catalan and where's, uh, you know, Trevon Boykin lining up and you're watching Doxon catching some passes and Aaron Green last last week's star against Iowa State. Catalan already four carries, 18 yards. Paul Hall launches one deep, some contact and no call intended for Jawan Story who had a step on Dorian Roberts. Well, I mean, the first incompletion of Paul Hall today was in partly due to Ryan Mueller here who's going to come around the outside, and he's going to get a hit right there. And that's the type of hits that we've seen from Ryan Mueller throughout the season, especially in the last month right now, where he's really taken off, where he's got eight and a half sacks in just the last three games alone. Six. This is second down and ten. Firing through the left side of that line is Aaron Green for three yards. It'll be third and seven. Well, you know, you mentioned we saw it was Ty Zimmerman who came in with a bad shoulder today. The number two tackler on this defense. So he's got a problem with his lower leg. He's the quarterback of the defense. And a former quarterback. Well. And that's one of the reasons why he sees the field so well from that free safety position. They do so little substituting on defense. They like to play their starters all the way through. Now he's really indispensable. Now here he is coming, coming into the picture. Ooh, ah, yeah, he got that left leg caught underneath. It just went out from underneath him. See where the injury occurred when you watch those replays. Pretty clear what happened to Zimmerman. And this crowd got quiet in a hurry. They realized just how important the senior is to that defense. Recruited as a quarterback and eventually changed the safety. That's the backup here now. Dylan Schellenberg, a junior out of Wichita. Third down. All kinds of time for Paul Hall, and it's picked off at the 20. Midfield, and wrapped up at the 41-yard line. It's Blake Slaughter, the middle linebacker, one of the leaders of that Kansas State defense. Well, it's his first interception of the season, and I think Paul Hall threw it right to him. I mean, he's right in the middle of the field. He's just reading the eyes of Paho right here. Gets underneath the route to Boykin. And maybe that was the wind that affected that throw. But, I mean, J.C. said they're a zone defense. He's just in a zone drop, reading the eyes of Paho. Steps right in front for his first interception. And it's an unbelievable story because this is a kid that redshirted a year ago to allow Arthur Brown to be the senior leader and get drafted by the Baltimore Ravens. He came back to be the leader this year. Smart kid. We had a chance to talk to him yesterday. He's an engineering major. Uh, he, he's not worried so much about playing in the NFL as he is moving on to a career in that field. But that intelligence plays a large role for him on the gridiron as well. Well, you can't be an engineer unless you understand angles. And angles are a big part of playing linebacker, whether it's getting in the passing lanes or taking the shortest route to tackle the ball carrier. Modest gain for Hubert on first down. Eddie Waters throwing on second, completes it, and down the 30 for a first down. That is Tyler Lockett, the junior from Tulsa, whose father is the all-time leading receiver in the history of Kansas State football. And we got a great matchup today, Mike, really, between Jason Barrett and Tyler Lockett. We'll see it a lot. And here he is. I mean, here's the matchup right now. So Lockett's a, or Barrett's a little bit off him right here. Ooh, <laughs> how about that move, huh? That's like the old playground move. <laughs> Just go ahead, but yeah. come back to the football. Hey, Lockett only goes yeah. a buck 75. He says, hey, I could be physical, yeah. too. <laughs> I like that route. Sam's now in a quarterback for the first time. This is what he does best. Tucks it and runs. And just tripped up. The on the field. It's a ball carrier. Down by rule. First down. 
tripped up at the 17-yard line after a 14-yard game. Well, this Sam's has run for 10 touchdowns this year. And really, when he takes that ball, it's kind of, he pauses when he, and he's just looking for the opening. Olobo just trips him up. I mean, that's the shoelace tackle. But Olobo saved a touchdown there. Oh, he sure did. Just barely. Because they just rotate quarterbacks right in the middle of the drive. Sam's again. Evades one tackler. And is ridden down at the 11 yard line by Jonathan Anderson. Six more yards, though, for Daniel Sams, who has run for 10 touchdowns this year as a backup quarterback. We can see the explosiveness that he adds. And he's not the fastest guy in a foot race, he's not, but he makes very quick cuts. He's got good vision, and he has a feel for it. And he's got an excellent offensive line. So this is what they want to do. Their quarterbacks have run the ball for over 200 carries alone this year. Over a third of the offense is the quarterbacks running. Glenn. Ronkowski now in at fullback, and yes, he is the brother of the New England tight end. The youngest of five Gronkowskis. Here's Sam's daylight touchdown. Make it 11 rushing touchdowns for the sophomore by way of Slidell, Louisiana. Well, he went with the hesitation and then the fake pop pass right here. Watch this little backyard move. He gets them to bite on the pass, and then he just sees the back door open up. And some guys that play this game at any level, they just have a nose for the goal line. And Gronkowski got a good lead block on for him as well. What a, what a rotation that Bill Snyder has figured out between Waters and Sams right now. Work to perfection on that drive as Cantilli punches it through to make it 7-0 Kansas State. It all started with the interception by senior middle linebacker Blake Slaughter. He makes the play on defense. Kansas State offense then takes over. Daniel Sams, 11th rushing touchdown of the year. His Wildcats up 7-0. 401 to play in the first quarter. It is Kansas State on top of TCU. 7-0 our score. Victims of the typhoon in the Philippines urgently need your help. The American Red Cross is distributing relief items, repairing and rebuilding shelters, providing health care, clean water, and sanitation to help victims of the typhoon. Please visit redcross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to give a $10 donation. Brian Baldinger, TCU, after turning it over on its last possession, will try to move the football here with B.J. Catalan, but he is stuffed near the line of scrimmage. And really for Casey Paha, this is a, you know, a senior season that has gone awry. He broke his left arm. He's really looking forward to it, but since he's come back from the broken left forearm, he's thrown six interceptions now in these last four games. And so how he overcomes you know, this last throw, go a long ways to determining the fate of TCU today and whether they can get to that magical six wins and become more eligible for the ninth time in a row. Paul Hall, lasers one complete. Again, that favorite route. Josh Doxson on the reception. He's already got four grabs. That one goes for six yards. You know, in this route combination, though, Mike, when you start throwing those slants, the next thing to come is a slant go. Right. Get them to bite on it and then get deep. And the guy to do that is really Ladarius Brown, who I think... He's in the slot right now, but he's a deep threat. He's a big receiver. That's what you would expect once they start kind of overplaying that slant route. Third and four. Paul Hall completes it. Now they'll give him forward progress, but I think it's still a yard short. They'll give him the 34. He needed the 35. Carter stopped immediately by Dorian Roberts. And now Brandon Carter still on the ground. Carter was the star of the game last week against Iowa State. Driven to the ground right here and out. That's a play that needs to be looked at. It's Travis Britz, it looks like, from the defensive line position coming in and just, I mean, that, by all means, what I was taught this summer was that's a targeting foul. Had to have it. 
punishing hit. They're trying to take those out of college football, and right they should. Carter doesn't take many shots from defensive tackles. Travis Britz goes 6'4", 295. And TCU will down it at the 26-yard line for a Fox College football game break. Let's check in for the first one. No, I don't think so. Central Florida, they still believe they've got a shot at one of those BCS bids. Remember, they beat Louisville, and they're in good undefeated, shape. Undefeated yeah. now in the American Conference. Their only loss this season was to a top 10 team in South Carolina. That came down to the final minutes of the fourth quarter. George O'Leary has done a good job there. Waters all kinds of time. Deep ball wide open near the 40 to the 20. Down the sideline. Touchdown, Tyler Lockett. Four yards for Tyler Lockett. And they went after the All-American, Jason Barrett. And they got him. And these quarterbacks can run it, and they can throw it. And Bill Snyder likes the way this team is playing. It's his style of football right now. Cantelli knocks the extra point through 14 nothing Kansas State well, so so much for the blustery conditions let's take a look at what Tyler Lockett did he's up at the top now here's the move right here I mean here's Lockett against Barrett right now we said Brett was gonna play him little Oh, the old stutter and go, huh? The old stop at the Buick and go to the stoplight move right out of the street. That was some move by Tyler Lockett. And the key was Waters got a, a lot of time for that move to take place. Double move the All-American and work to perfection. One thing about Jason Brett, you got to have a short-term memory. After a play like that, you got to put it out of your mind and come right back and play. But that was a good, good move by Lockett. He really sold it. The Mitsubishi scoring drive, one play, 74 yards. Well, they have thrown Jason Barrett's way now three times, two of them for completions. Well, here it is. It's kind of like a little. Looks like he's going to run it out, and then he's going to look like he's going to run a stop, and then go, and look at that separation. That's just a great move. Great move. I mean, a lot of corners get beat on that move. And the key was, Waters had all kinds of time for that to develop. Hey, guys, remember when we talked to Tyler Lockett yesterday, he said all the work that he's done all offseason, this year, all the games that they've played, for him is leading up to this moment to play against a guy like Jason Barrett and Tyler Lockett obviously getting the better of that matchup right now but that's a long there's a lot left in that matchup a long lot of game left yeah it should be fun to watch Lockett's a soft-spoken young man first charge timeout TCU 30 seconds As TCU has to burn a timeout Nightly on Fox Sports Live, join Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole along with Donovan McNabb, Andy Roddick, and Carissa Thompson as they bring you all the scores, news, and highlights that you need. Catch Fox Sports Live nightly on Fox Sports 1. Just to finish the point on Lockett, you know, he's still in his mind, feels like he's got something to prove. He doesn't want to be known as just a return man. He wants to prove to everybody he can be a star wide receiver. And that's where he was prior to this year. He was a star return. You know, the best of the Big 12, one of the best of the nation, but he's gotten that chance to be the featured X receiver, the go-to guy. He's been that. There's still a lot of football to be played for Kansas State. He's going to have a lot more opportunities before the season is over. Paul Hall again short pass caught at the 29 that's Trevon Boykin his second reception it goes for eight well, Trevon Boykin has really been the featured player here right now in the slot He's running a little bow out right here the more times you can get the ball in Trevon Boykin's hands the better this offense is going to look he's, he's got 
got good size, he's thick, and he can run. Make moves, make people miss. To the ground. And trying to gut it between the tackles was Aaron Green. He gets pretty squeezed out a yard, but he's going to be a yard shy. Well, one of the issues for TCU all year long has been their inability to run the ball when they have to run the ball. They're only averaging three and a half yards a carry. You know, look, Gary will tell you, you know, the offensive line has been banged up. They've had a lot of different guys in different positions. They haven't had the continuity that they would love to have. But they've got to be better up front to get these tough yards. They've already been stuffed, stuffed once on third and one in their opening drive of the day. Green the lone back. They fake it to him in Paul Hall. Will fall down, kind of an awkward slide. Remember, he's got his left arm kind of dinged up, so he might be protecting it there. Well, he's not a great runner, but he's an effective runner. He, I mean, he's going to make you be honest. So if that end, Ryan Mueller, wants to crash on the running back, he's going to pull it and take it for the first down. You mentioned TCU's problems on the ground. I, I can't believe a Gary Patterson team dead last in rushing. Yeah. 107th in the FBS in running the football. Catalan between the tackles, grinding ahead for about three. <laughs> Let's check in with J.C. Hey, guys, an update on, on Zimmerman, the defensive back. He was carted into the locker room, didn't even walk under his own power. So I'll try to keep you posted at, as I get more information on that. But he is in the locker room. Thank you, J.C. End of quarter number one. It's been all K-State early. Wildcats, 14. Horn Frogs, nothing. You're watching Fox College Football. College football is brought to you by Whataburger. Try one of the Whataburger all-time favorites 24 hours a day. And by Fred Loya Insurance. Take the 10-minute challenge and save. Paul Hall on second down and eight goes five wide and completes the pass to Brandon Carter, who's banged around like a pinball before the, getting the first down. Well, it's the second time he's been blasted right in his helmet, and he's asking for a little... Recognition from the officials here about are you going to protect me here today? I don't blame them. You know, Baldy, a lot of times what happens when a, a call is a point of emphasis like that in college football, the first few weeks, they can't call it enough. Yeah. As the season moves on, they start scaling back. I haven't seen it in any of the games that I've done this year. I know it's been called. I don't think these officials in, in the Big 8 or the Big 12 here, there are eight officials covering this game, the only conference in America with eight officials. First down, little razzle dazzle, end around the Carter. Shakes one man, but blasted right after at the 49 yard line. Okay, the, the discipline of Ryan Mueller and his play is really amazing. Because you're going to get the motion coming back here, but this end right here, Ryan Mueller, he's staying home. He's playing disciplined discipline football. He's got the back door, so when he sees Carter come, immediately, fundamentally, he goes to the back leg. The backside leg forcing him back inside to his help and what looked like was going to be a big game turned out to be just three yards. Randall Evans finished him off, setting up a second down and seven. Firing through is B.J. Catalan. It'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first down. Our Coors Light game summary. This game, a little more than 15 and a half minutes in Casey Paul Hall 9 of 11 56 yards with the big INT DJ Catalan back in the TCU backfield but right now Horn Frogs already down 14 trying to play a little catch up we always remember you know you're down 14 you can't get it all back in one play so it's all about just continued execution third and a yard and a half they'll try it and powering forward, he looks shy. A Catalan. No. Ran right behind the big V, the left tackle. Power formation. Didn't move the line of scrimmage. I think Finau. Finau. Stopped him. him up. Yes, Finau stacked him up. I think he had to go for it down 14 yeah. nothing. I mean, Garrett Patterson making the right call. 
And the crowd knows what to do. <laughs> and the guys on the sideline know how to get the crowd involved. Ninth play of the drive. Ooh. Very close. Tell you, it's where they're going to spot this. They went with Jordan Moore, the biggest of the backs yep. at 6'3", 220. That's Eric Tausch down at the bottom of that pile. I do not think they're getting a good spot here. No. no they're not even going to measure. Left but, foot, right foot. That was the wrong foot for TCU. Well, they've been stopped on third and one. They've been stopped on fourth and one. Can you run the ball when you have to run it? Right now, they're going to try a quick snap. Kansas State, they're set. Look at them. Good penetration from Slaughter. So many different players were ready to go. Gonna, well, well, you can review the spot. The ruling on the field that TCU was short of the line to gain is under further review. Well, yeah, why not? I mean, if you're Gary Patterson, you want this reviewed. And typically, if it's close on fourth down, they'll take another look at it anyway. I don't blame Jared Anderson for what he did. Quick snap him, try to get him to the line quickly. Sometimes you don't give yourself a chance to get set and really set your blocks. We didn't see him. They didn't move the line of scrimmage. Now, that replay there won't show anything. You need, you need another look here to see where that ball is. Great penetration. I don't know if it was Shaquille Reed, uh, Reed inside there that blew up Joey Hunt, the center. He got the instant penetration. I, I, we certainly on those replays didn't see anything no. that I think would overturn it. I don't think so. Of course, Gary Patterson, a former Kansas State coach himself, back here in 1982 on the staff. After start further here. review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. Reggie Smith, our referee today, and again, they're looking at the same angles that we are. Nothing was definitive enough to overturn that spot. So now, if you're TCU on offense, you've thrown an interception, and you've been stopped on fourth down, you can't get anything going in a short yardage run game. when TCU likes to just stay with the run and just pound it. As I say that, Waters stops back and throws it to lock it. That time, Brett was right there. I mean, this is a team that runs at 64% of the time, you know, amongst the most in all of college football. And, you know, the way that Bill Snyder builds his team, it makes sense when you play in Manhattan, Kansas. You never know what the weather's going to be like here, especially in November. And the elements play a factor. Today, the wind is gusty. It's a 70 degree day, but it could be a 20 degree day here in mid November. I mean, this is the Indian summer here. Fans are enjoying it. 12th consecutive sellout here at Bill Snyder Stadium. They're expecting a 13th for their final home game of the year. Sam is at quarterback on second and 10. Rather predictably, he will run it. Bangs his way for a couple. Yeah, Bill Snyder told us in, in talking to him this week that, look, it's it's not what I prefer. I don't prefer playing two quarterbacks. It, we know it's unconventional. The key was Sam's was coming back. He shared a little time with Colin Klein, and then they recruited Jake Waters, uh, you know, out of Iowa Western Community College. He told him, look, it's a competition is on, but we're going to play to our, our best, put our best players on the field, and right now their best players are two quarterbacks, and they found a way to make it work. And they go back to Waters here in the gun on third down. All kinds of time. And the pass is nowhere near. He was looking for Thompson, but he was bracketed. At yeah, that time, look at Paul Dawson was right there. And that's exactly what TCU's defense needed, especially after the big play they gave up. They came right back and got a, a quick three and out. Able to hopefully get the ball back to their offense. As the ball is rolling on the ground away from the spot. Reset. Eccles Looper back to receive the punt from Kraus. That's a good one. Long spiral, no chance of a return there. And 
see the end zone. Casey Paul Hall and TCU's offense will get another crack at it. They trail it 14 nothing. Look at TCU head coach Gary Patterson now in his 13th year with the Horn Frogs. He went to Kansas State. This is back in 1982 as a grad assistant. Look at a young, a boyish looking Gary Patterson. Yeah. Look what head coaching does to you. It takes, <laughs> it'll take a few years off you. But he still has the same passion for the game as he spent time in the little apple 25, 30 years ago. Paul Hall threads the needle to Boykin. The one guy that has been not been involved in this offense at all is Ladarius Brown. He's their biggest target. Good blocker, not on the field right now, but it's I would expect without Ty Zimmerman in the game, uh, the quarterback of that secondary, that they should try to go deep and attack uh, a weakened secondary without their best player back there. And I'm with you. I'd like to see Paul Hall cut it loose at some point. Very conservative passing game in the early going. On the ground, it's Aaron Green. Former Parade All-American who signed with Nebraska had to sit out last year as you see with Darius Brown parked on the sideline 32 catches this season and even though he's only got one touchdown to fall to your right I mean he's a guy at 6 4 very athletic he can take the roof off the defense and he's also a very good blocker so he helps you when you get to the perimeter. Here comes the blitz on third down in and out of the hands of Brandon Carter. They can't throw it any better. I mean, Paul Hall put it right there, right on Brandon Carter's hands, and just going to run a little out right to the sticks or to the first down markers. Ball's out of Paul Hall's hands. There's the first down. I mean, everything was there to be had right in front of Randall Evans. Just a flat drop. Evans, one of several former walk-ons, yeah, playing significant minutes on that defense. That was dropped. And then picked up by Perry. Up, turn over the shoulder, running backwards, grab by Lockett. He'll take a loss on the return. Some hard hitting going on today. Both these teams know how to lay the lumber. They've done it. K-State's gotten the better of TCU thus far. 10 4 to play in the first half, 14-0. Casey Paul Hall now in his senior year. You know, guys, it just seems like Paul Hall, we've done a number of TCU games, doesn't really seem himself right now. Well, I mean, his job is to lead. His job is to inspire and to help them score points. They've got a goose egg up there right now, so it always falls on the quarterback's shoulder. Some guys accept it. You know, right now, Casey seems like, uh, you know, he's just struggling to find that leadership that he needs. First down, Hubert for a couple. JC? Yeah, guys, I, you know, I think uh, I agree with everything that Brian just said. I think they need to put Trevon Boykin in at quarterback. I mean, this offense needs a spark. They have nothing going on right now. And all the throws that they're asking Casey Paul Hall to make, Trevon Boykin can also make all those throws, the short, quick slants and the stops. But now he gives them another dimension with his feet. I think he brings them a spark that they badly need right now. And they certainly could use some spark down 14. Offense hasn't gotten a whole lot going. Last week, Paul Hall really struggled against Iowa State. Boykin was the hero in that one with three touchdowns. Talk about threading the needle there. Waters finds Kyle Klein. Kyle Klein, the younger brother of the former Heisman Trophy candidate from last year. Over here, big Cornelius Lucas doing a good job on Tua Ua. Just stoning him right there. Big, big matchup right there. And so, really, Waters has plenty of time to be able to find Klein right past Dawson's earlobe. Pushing that ball through the wind. Dawson, who, look, this team has 17 interceptions coming into today, leading the Big 12. That could have been an 18th. And Dawson's like, oh, my. Where's that a hole in my glove there? And that was a Houdini act, how he didn't get at least a hand on it. 
to see Kevin White down. Kevin White, one of the starting corners for this TCU defense. Kevin White, experienced player, making his 26th start. Just lands awkward there as Klein caught it. Kyle Klein, of course, everybody sort of pulling for Colin Klein as he still trying to make it to the next level. See Deontay Gray now in for him. Denver offensive player, forced to play a lot of defensive back this year. That's a great play by Jonathan Anderson. A late penalty flag. We've had very few penalties in this game. This is a team that feasts on negative plays. Anderson just created one, but there's a penalty flag. Well, they're going to take Dawson out here and put Mallet in the game. I'm sure this will be just a, a mention or a coaching point to Dawson, their leading tackler. Well, you, you, you've got some momentum building up, at least on the defensive side yeah. of the ball. That's a killer. Gives K-State great field position. And, of course, the automatic first down now from the 49. down to three. That pass broken up by the All-American Jason Verrett. Remember that shot we saw of Verrett after he gave up the big double move touchdown to lock it? Mm -hmm. He's on his side and I said, you got to have a short-term memory. Right. I mean, you can't you can't let that simmer. And so here is kind of a like little bit of a fake pop pass right here. Going forward on the run and Verrett was right there. So he's defending the last two passes that they've thrown against him. And that's the hallmark of any good corner is to be able to put the bad play out and go on to the next one. And the good ones, they all have the same psyche like that. Audible here called by Jake Waters, the quarterback. And the gun on second and ten. Well picked off near midfield. Well, Sam Carter. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 32. He read it all the way. Fourth interception of the year for Carter, the 18th. But right now for TCU, and this is what gets this team going. It's the defense that sparks the team, and Sam Carter just did it. He was a quarterback way back as a freshman. He reads the eyes of a quarterback. He's looking at him all the way. He, oh, he picked him. Sam Carter just sitting on the outside right here. Just jumped right in the inside. And Boykin in at quarterback here. Immediately going to the backup and trying to feed off of that spark created by Carter. Boykin operating out of the shotgun. Four-man rush. He'll keep it. Bouncing outside and picks up about three. And of course, the element that Trevon Boykin gives you. The only thing that's kept Boykin out, obviously, Paul Hall is, at times has been the man, but the, the thing that concerns about Boykin, the one thing is just accuracy. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a factor. I mean, because a lot of it was he didn't get a chance to practice at quarterback all the time. He's been taking his wide receiver reps one week, he practiced at running back all week. Boykin stays in at quarterback. And a penalty flag on the play. It was 7.49 to play in the first half. This will back him up five. Full start, offense number 65. Five-yard penalty, it's second down. This is what Gary Patterson's defense has done this season. 28 sacks, first in the Big 12. Now the 18th interception, first in the Big 12. He came in today, fourth in the nation with interceptions. They feast off of these type of plays. Now can they capitalize on it? Now back to Paul Hall on second and long. 
Throws that one a little high. Doxson could not hold on. Looks like Paul Hall was throwing off his back foot. Sometimes you gotta throw off your back foot. Sometimes the defense makes you do it. This time, get a late delayed blitz that time, and so Dory Roberts gets the hit on Doxson, but it was a late hit by that group, the defensive line here, who doesn't blitz much. They get pressure with the front four. Mueller playing defensive tackle inside. We'll see what they can hold him off. Two of seven on third down is TCU. Paul Hall flushed out, throws back, and it's dropped by Brown. Would have been shy of the marker anyway, but might have put the Horn Frogs in field goal position if he holds on. What a defensive stop by Kansas State. This is what Bill Snyder was saying, how this team is coming together. I mean, you throw the interception, you give him some field position. Paul Hall scanning the field here. What do I have? Do I have anything? All right. That ball got tipped. Yeah, that's why I didn't get to Ladarius Brown clean. I mean, they get the quarterbacks off their spot. They move them. They just hunt you down. More tipped it. And it looks like TCU is going to attempt the field goal anyway. TCU. Maybe they want a time to talk about this. Now, Overchrome does have a strong leg. And we'll see if they stay with the decision to go for three when we return. Also coming back, we'll join Laura McKeeman in our Fox College football studio for a look at what's coming up at halftime. TCU, after thinking more about it than analyzing where that wind is, deciding to punt it away and doing a great job of pinning Kansas State inside the five. A right, nice play by Brandon Carter. Really great play by the wide receiver going down there and knocking that ball in the field of the play here. Playing like a defensive back and batting this ball back and keeping out of the end zone. Terrific play. And it was the right move by Gary Patterson, not attempting a field goal into this win and playing field position here. Smart move by Patterson. JC, you can feel that wind, how hard it's gusting, how difficult a field goal that would have been. Yeah, like Brian's saying, absolutely smart decision to take that time out and reevaluate because the wind was blowing directly in the kicker's face. And now you pin Kansas State back at the five-yard line. Now you start playing the game of field position and hopefully get your offense the ball back in, in great field position. From the end zone, throwing it up for grabs and out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Waters did everything he could just to avoid the <laughs> safety and unload the football. Well, they brought Jason Brett again on a corner blitz from wide off the slot. He's coming from this direction. They're going for the safety here. They want a big play defensively. They're sending the corner after him. Water feels it, and he throws this ball away. Look at Brett coming. <laughs> Water's like, wait a second. Aren't you supposed to be covering my wide receiver? Yeah, they're calling all the defenses right now. That is a great shot to give you an idea of what a quarterback <laughs> has to look at. <laughs> That's not the way it looked on Thursday's practice. <laughs> In trouble and down near the one-yard line. Jonathan Anderson making another big play on defense. Well, think about it. This team specializes in takeaways, whether it's interceptions, sacks, tackle for losses. I mean, right now, this is sort of what gets the, the energy of TCU going. Field position, defense, interception in the last series, pinning Kansas State back here, trying to make a big play from uh, deep in their territory. Wildcats 0 for 2 on third down. This is third and 13. Waters wisely throws it away. Had nobody open. And TCU's defense is saying, hey, we're doing our part. Offense, you got to go ahead and make something going here. Well, it started with Brandon Carter with knocking that ball back to the three-yard line. Then you send the corner blitz, and you get a tackle for a loss, and then you chase the quarterback in his own end zone. I mean, you're going to get the ball back to the offense in good field position. That's special teams and defense that's fueling it right now. That was Marcus Mallett. Look at this. Right in the <laughs> face of Waters. That foot is as close to the back end zone line as you can get. And if you touch it, it's a safety. Yep. Great 
great effort by Kraus, and perhaps a better return by Echols Looper, who gets it to the 38-yard line. Beautiful Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Some of the great additions that they've made here in the last 12 months. Kansas State leading TCU 14-0. Great field position for TCU, who trails Kansas State 14-0 as Paul Hall back in the game. Rifles one complete, and a great second effort banging off potential tacklers by David Porter. David Porter, one of the receivers in the slot, is going to come in and just run a quick slant right now and off play action. Nice throw that time by Paul Hall, put it right on his fingertips, and this is the best field position TCU has had all afternoon. 18 yards on first down. Nice cut back there by Catalan. Back in the starting lineup. Gobbles up five. It'll set up second and five. TCU has really been stymied offensively today. But a golden opportunity right here as we near the five-minute mark of the first half. Well, the, the TCU defense has kept them in the game, the special teams, and so Jared Anderson's job Right there with the headset on and sunglasses. His job is to take advantage of what the other two phases of the game have done for him. A beautiful oh. wiggle by Catalan. Touchdown, TCU. <laughs> that was a big time move by PJ Catalan. You're going to see a little. Little freeze him and beat him. He put him in the deep freeze with the little shake and bake Dante Barnett. The safety put a little shake on him, and then it was a walk into the end zone, and Paul Hall gives him a tap on the helmet, and that was the way to finish off good field position. Sneaking it through, the left upright is over Chrome. What a job by B.J. Cato on a 15-yard run. Sixth touchdown of the year. And this just comes down to my move is better than yours. Yeah, well, try this in your backyard. Oof. <laughs> Barnett thought he had him. And then the eyes immediately go up, and he goes, all that green in between. <laughs> we, we all love to be able to do that. I mean, you know, if you were playing flag football, you wouldn't get the flag off B.J. Catalan right there. <laughs> nah, that's, uh, that's great skill. That's their leading running back. They missed him last week. They got him back today. And really, that was all phases of TCU's team coming together. Great defense, special teams, field position, and then the good throw by Paul Hall to Porter and B.J. Catalan finishing it off. A weird game. It feels like Kansas State has dominated thoroughly, and yet it's a one-possession game. Returnable. Lockett. He's taken four to the house in his career. He takes this one to the 34-yard line. And for a Fox College football game break, let's check in with Laura McKeeman. Mike, how about some more Big 12 action? You're wondering why Charlie Weiss is getting a Gatorade shower. Well, it's because Kansas snapped their 27-game Big 12 losing streak, beating West Virginia 31-19 today. The students rush in the field, pure chaos, and that is understandable because it's the first Big 12 win since November 6, 2010 for Kansas. Now, well, great Thank moment you. for Charlie Weiss. I'm happy for Charlie. And right down the road in Lawrence, Kansas, they've got a nice celebration going on that campus. Sam's in at quarterback. Sam's scampers for nine. Mallet on the stop for TCU. He's so patient when he runs. He really lets the blockers get their blocks, sets them up. And then he just has enough wiggle and shake and vision to just kind of find the hole as it's as it's open Five. biggest run of the day was right there by Sam's for the touchdown put them give them the uh, opening touchdown of the game five carries 42 yards now for Sam's stays in on second and one and he'll 
throw. Kansas State does this. Shades of Tim Tebow at Florida back in the day where you everybody in the building thinks he's going to run and then pops up for the throw. Why it is. I mean, it's just a point guard. I mean, he's just going to basically catch it, kind of dance a little bit, buy some time, draw Jonathan Anderson up. And then once the linebackers draw up, he's got his eyes on Sexton. It's a play I'm waiting to see in the NFL. I've seen every phase of college football, the pistol, the read option. I haven't seen that play in the NFL, and it's got to be coming. On first down, more Sams. And this time, unable to break the tackle. That hit her. Sam's going to be slow to get up. He took a shot to the back of the neck that time. Jonathan Anderson, who's played very well in this first half on that tackle. Well, remember, they took Dawson out after the face mask penalty. Mallet went in for him, and Dawson hasn't been back in there. They got three, three line, inside linebackers that they rotate, but Dawson's their leading tackler. He hasn't been back on the field. There you see Paul Dawson. A spectator right now. First charge timeout, but Kansas State, 30 seconds. The chin strap is still buckled. He's ready to go. Part of that patented Gary Patterson 4-2-5 defense, which has been so good over the years and, again, has a chance to match Nebraska's 96 team leading the league in picks and sacks. Coming up on Fox College Football Halftime, presented by Arby's, the Cowboys and the Longhorns in Austin. UCF, we saw that earlier, the walk-off win against Temple. And Texas Tech battling the Baylor Bears. I'll tell you what, this sets up to be a very strenuous, yet potentially rewarding finish for Baylor if they can pull it off. Well, the more teams they can play with the better records, if Texas can keep winning, you know, Oklahoma State can keep winning, it will make them look better in the polls. They've got Oklahoma State and Texas still to look forward to. Depending on how he performs, you can't rule out Bryce Petty, some of that Heisman Trophy conversation. Well, he's getting a lot of attention this morning, a lot of the talk shows. Sams at quarterback on second down and eight. He'll tuck it and run. Like he was shot out of a cannon. Picks up about eight. Close to a first down. He was running behind the big bruising fullback, Glenn Ronkowski. And also over there on the right side of the line, uh, Rooks and Stiverson. Big hole opened up that time. Gronkowski just keeps getting better and better. They call him Little Gronk. He's yeah. really not little, but compared to some of his brothers, he is. Compared to his brother, he's got a wingspan of a condor. <laughs> he, he is. Play down to two. Just did get it off. Launching one deep has a man just out of the reach of Tremaine Thompson who beat Chris Hackett down the field. And really, Sam's hasn't missed many of these. Uh, here's Thompson in the slot. He's going up against uh, Hackett right there. Wow, nice move. Thompson's got real speed. He beat him clean. Really, now the wind may have really affected that ball. It may have really knocked it down. But what you'd want from Sam's is just put a little bit more air in yeah. under it. There's nobody that you have to beat. You don't have to worry about another free safety over there. Just let Thompson go get it. On second down, Sam spinning his way to about a four, maybe five yard game. Marcus Mallet trips him up. And really, TCU's got to be pleased with how they've stopped this running attack. I mean, this is the second leading rushing attack in the Big 12 next to Baylor. Over 200 yards a game, and they've got them, they've held them to just over 50 right now. And you got to feel pretty good about what they've done to contain them. And they've done a great job defensively on third down. K-State 0 for 3 on third. Four-man rush. Sams completes it at the 25-yard line to lock it. Well, Lockett is their go-to guy, and he's got beautiful, soft hands here. 
as he just snatches this ball out of the air. Nice throw by Sam's now. Plenty of time. The offensive line did their job. Sam's just stayed in the pocket. Nice route that time by Lockett, getting a little separation from Deontay Gray. That's all it took. Brett back on Lockett now. Sam's. <laughs> Look at that move. Written down by Mallet. Will stop and go. Yeah. He's not the fastest guy. I mean, if you put him in a 40 yard dash, maybe Sam's runs 4'6, four, 4'7. Four, but that ability just to kind of stop and start, the suddenness that he does, you know, very, very elusive. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's even running no, full speed. He's, he's always, like, under control, very fluid. Seconds now remaining in the first half. Sands again. There's a timeout by Bill Snyder. A quick one. That'll lead. Kansas City, 30 seconds. That'll leave K State with one timeout remaining and 15 seconds on the clock. Our CC's Pizza BCS standings. Look like following follows uh, Alabama number one, Florida State two. They should be uh, routing Syracuse at this point. Ohio State taking care of business in the Big Ten. Stanford, Baylor, I mean, those top five yeah. make for a very interesting well, final few weeks. Ed Elgeron has done a good job at USC in place of Lane Kiffin and big matchup tonight at the Coliseum. Baylor, Texas Tech, we'll see that later on today. We'll see what I think is the best offense in all of college football with what Art Bryles has going on in Waco. Baylor just signed him to a long-term deal. Third and four. Waters running and picking up the first down. They'll stop the clock with seven seconds. Anderson on the tackle for the Horn Frogs. Got enough time for maybe one more play. Third and final touch timeout. K-State, 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, you could take a shot at the end zone here, Baldy, and if you don't get it, still get the field goal. Yeah, but if anything makes you double pump or move, if Waters has to be chased, you got to have that clock in your head. You know, because sometimes that extra second is all it takes. So it's a dangerous play, I think. I mean, if you just say, okay, I'm going to throw it to lock it. If it's there, it's there. If not, we kick the field goal. Right. Okay. But I don't think they're going to do that. I think they put the field goal kicker out there and don't take any chances and go for the three points here. And that's, that's what they're going to do. That's exactly what they're going to do. Cantelli on. Seven of nine this season. This will be from 31. And through the wind, it sails through. And some insurance for Kansas State now up by 10. 17-7, three seconds remaining in the first half. Good first half. I mean, Kansas State, look, they've got a 10-point lead, a, a lot of it off of some big plays. Uh, the big touchdown throw to Tyler Lockett, 74 yards. I mean, that was the one that really broke them open. But TCU has shown that defensively they can stop Kansas State. They can take the ball away. Um, I would think there's a lot of things that Gary Patterson should be optimistic about going into the locker room at halftime. It's an 11-play drive. 51 yards, 5.03 off the clock. Maybe a little bit too much off the clock there towards the end of that drive. Culminated by the field goal. And there's so much here for Gary Patterson and this team to play for. I mean, he's gone to eight straight bowl games. They're two wins away from being bowl eligible. I mean, that's a big motivating factor for a team. For a program, that's an extra month of practicing. Right. That's a reward for the seniors. All those things. Maybe a chance to take down the, the Golden Bo Baylor Bears and in a couple of weeks. They got two weeks to get ready for them. Well, this is kind of uncharted territory for Gary Patterson. We talked to him about it earlier this week. He's only had one kind of off season, if yeah. you will. And we asked him how the morale has been and how the players have handled the, some of the adversity this year. He said, you know what, the, the attitude couldn't be better. Everybody is, is all in. There hasn't been any those types of problems. But obviously, 
when you start off the year the way TCU did, it's it's a it's a challenge for any program, but for one that's well, so used to winning, it's even doubly I mean, tough. They opened up with LSU. Right. That's never <laughs> it's never an easy start. Right, and then your quarterback breaks his arm in the second game. Yep. All right, so your offense is struggling. You had offensive line injuries. Devontae and, Fields. Yeah, Devontae Fields was, you know, the Big 12 player to the year coming back. He was going to lead the league in sacks and all those kind of things. And so, look, I mean, it's part of coaching. Those things happen, and you got to find a way to get past it. <laughs> Gary Patterson and his TCU Horn Frogs will try to rally from a 10-point deficit. That's our score. Halftime here in Manhattan. It's Kansas State on top of TCU, 17-7. When we return, Laura McKeeman and Tony Banks in our studio for Fox College Football Halftime, presented by Arby's. Point game at the half. It's Kansas State 17 and TCU 7 here in Manhattan. Mike Morgan alongside Brian Baldinger. And Baldy, we had some big plays offensively, but for the most part, the first 30 minutes were dominated by defense. Well, I mean, two good defenses going at it today, and I thought the defenses really kind of set up the offenses in that first half, and it really started with interceptions by the defense where they really pressure the quarterback. This first one by Blake Slaughter here at Kansas State, the middle linebacker and their leading tackler. He got him started. That would lead to a, a Daniel Sams touchdown run. They got him on the board. And then Sam Carter came back and he picked off uh, Waters right here and set up TCU for their own score. And then the big play of the first half was this double move by Ty Lockett against Jason Verrett. That was 74 yards, the longest touchdown play for Lockett from the wide receiver position. And then B.J. Catalan came back, and he got TCU on the score. Kansas State would get a late field goal and go up 17-7. But the staffs, that's at the end of the first half. I mean, even Steven in the rushing yards. I mean, the first downs, the turnovers, pretty even first half. The difference here, J.C. Pearson, to me, was the big play. And one of the matchups we've been watching, and I know you've been watching from the field level, is Ty Lockett, the leading receiver of K-State against Jason Verrett, who many think is the best cornerback in the Big 12. And really, you have to say that Lockett won that battle there in the first half of the big play. Yeah, I mean, it's a good matchup, but I think in the second half, Kansas State has got to continue to go back to Tyler Lockett. He's a guy that can make big plays for you, not only down the field, but throw it to him short. He's a quick guy that can make a guy miss and turn it into a big gain. And a guy like Jason Verrett, who's a, a big time corner and an All American, sometimes you got to test those guys because they they haven't been tested a lot. You got to go after him, and he got beat with that double move early. I think you got to continue to go at it. Real quick here, uh, we as we wrap up halftime, uh, JC is when is TCU going to take their deep shot? They're without Ty Zimmerman in the backfield for K-State right now. They got to take a shot and try to get back in this game. Well, they need to not only take a shot, they need to take a bunch of them because they're playing to keep their bold hopes alive. So in the second half, I think they got to pull out all stops, get aggressive, and try to put a lot of points on the board. And that starts with throwing the ball down the field. K-State, remember, won the toss deferred. So the Wildcats get it first here at half number two. And that one, with some help from those 40-mile-an-hour winds, will sail out of the end zone. It'll be first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Well, as we mentioned, defensively, both teams are rather stout in half number one. You see what K-State was able to do, dividing up the snaps with the quarterbacks. Waters, the better passer. Sam's the better runner, and he sparked a touchdown drive. He was the leading rusher for the game in half number one with 62 yards. And the touchdown. I was really, I'm just amazed at how Bill Snyder has made this two quarterback system work. Quarterbacks have bought into it. It's not about stats, it's about wins. And they both have helped this team win three in a row in the Big 12. Run by Waters on first down. Possession wise for each team in half number one, a lot of punts. Kansas State 
three of them overall in the turnover, but sandwiched in between, had a couple of good touchdowns. One helped in part by a turnover from TCU, and then the field goal to close out the half. Well, Bill Snyder will tell you, you know, when they struggled at the start of the season, they were minus 10 in that turnover ratio. And in this three-game win streak, that minus 10 ratio is now down to minus three. So that's been the big big part of their turnaround here in this season. Yeah, that's how you go from losing three in a row in the Big 12 to winning three in a row in the Big 12 Conference. Second and long. Waters not on the same page that time with Tyler Lockett. Kevin White has returned. He was a little banged up there in the first half. He's gone in for a little examination before the halftime so we get one of their starting cornerbacks back on the field Barrett right here as we've mentioned at halftime and throughout the game out there wide against Tyler Lockett trying to shut him down here to start this third quarter right up in his grill on third and eight waters Tucks it and runs. Penalty flags all over the place. This one might be coming back. It would be first down yardage if it held up. He got 12 on the carry. If so, it would be the first. Holding offense number 55. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's Cody Whitehair, who was a freshman All American last year. And that's the first penalty of the game. I mean, that's Bill Snyder kind of football. Yeah, here's, here he is going up against Tua Ua. Puts his left hand out there. and I would say that Mike Tua Ua might have done a little Academy Award job there, kind of drawing the foul. He'll take it, force him to this third and long. They're down at 18 now. Four-man rush, Waters settles in. Fires deep right side in the traffic incomplete a dangerous throw Derek Kindred who's playing some really good football lately for TCU got his hand on it well he did I mean this is just going to come right into your living room right here Kindred right there 26 reading his man all the way makes a break on the ball undercuts it and in that win, that ball just hung up just a little bit on the throw to Thompson. And that's all it took. And so TCU did their job. The holding call helped. They forced it. And that's exactly what they probably talked about is Trevon Boykin back there to return his punt. First time he's been back there today. And wow. he did not call for the fair catch, apparently. No, no. I thought he did. Jeez. You want to talk that's about a risky move. Well, risky, but confidence in your hands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this guy's got the softest hands here, but look at him. He's surrounded now. I, I, I don't know what that was. That He did wave his right hand out, but it was a half-hearted. Yeah. And here he was. Free game, just catching punts, fielding him. What, what is the fair catch right. signal in case I got to do it today? Falling right out of Paul Hall's hands. Penalty flags, three of them, in fact, as Paul Hall pounces on it. Looked like offsides on Kansas State. There were fouls by both teams. Offside, defense number 44. Holding, offense number 56. The fouls off set, repeat first down. You don't see that very often, a hold after an offsides penalty. Yeah, well, Mueller is going to get a quick jump here. That kind of starts it. That's the first penalty. There it is. Just jumping the gun, and part of the reason why Paul Hall lost the ball there. No, it's just a duel. <laughs> Never happened. First and ten. Paul Hall over the middle, complete. Takes a shot, still on his feet. There's your man, Ladarius Brown, escorted out of bounds at around the 21 yard line. Well, that's what I was asking JC at halftime when they're going to get the ball to Ladarius Brown, their leading receiver. He took a shot with the helmet right to the ribs. And hang on. And Baldy, I think we talked about them having to be aggressive right from the jump. We see 
Trevon Boykin as the punt returner, and now coming out offensively, they're throwing the ball down the field. They're with the wind, by the way, right now also. So that can be an advantage that they have to use in trying to throw the ball. And I think they got to tap the middle without Ty Zimmerman in the game. Oh, completes it at the five and grinding his way to the two-yard line. That's Jawan Story, the 6'4 sophomore. Well, I tell you, Casey Paha has come out and maybe thrown his two best passes of the day. With confidence, with muster, stick throws in traffic, and put it right on his receiver's hands. And, Baldy, I think you hit on a key point. It's, it's worth repeating. Ty Zimmerman probably not going to return to this no. game. Out the star safety, one of the top safeties in the country, and they're attacking the middle of the field. With Boykin in the game in the wildcat position. Inverted wishbone. Boykin, hands off. Not this time. Jordan Moore stuffed near the line of scrimmage. Maybe squeezed out a yard. The Wildcats don't give you a yard. You better earn it. Hey, they don't give you any of these touchdowns now. I mean, they're, you're going to have to fight for every blade of grass in this part of the field. This is a prideful unit led by that man. Trey Walker going off the field. We talked about TCU's problems in short yardage. We've seen it already today, denied multiple times. This is second and goal from the one. Confusion, no, jump pass, touchdown! Boykin. Boykin to Doxon, what a play! <laughs> yeah, I think the, the fact that he didn't get a handle on it helped the play. It really helped sell it. And nobody saw Doxon release. And Boykin is just so valuable. He won the game last week in the final seconds at Iowa State in the same part of the field. But here's Doxon just going to slip to the backside. But watch Boykin just a little slow getting that ball out of his hands and play action. Best drive of the day for TCU. But First, it was Paul Hall getting it done through the air. Getting him into the red zone. That one by Ladarius Brown. Then this one from Jawan Story. Then it's time for Trevon Boykin. A little jump pass. Touchdown, TCU. Three-point game. Fox College football is brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. <laughs> Had a feeling he'd be a factor somehow in this game. Trevon Boykin, three touchdowns last week in the win over Iowa State. And coming through in the clutch towards the end of that drive, the jump pass completed. And making it 17 to 14, a three-point game. Well, watch how open Doxon is on this little pop pass here. A little fake to Catalan right here. Boykin's trying to take the ball back out of Catalan. Takes a hit, just throws it up, but really, you know, Boykin had scored three touchdown runs last week on runs of 18, of three, and a game winner of one yard. They were all looking to sell out to stop Boykin that time, and Doxon was the benefactor. So TCU couldn't have gotten off to a better start here in this third quarter. Now it's time for Kansas State to get this crowd back into it for him with Daniel Sams at quarterback. You saw the BMW ultimate drive of the game. That makes it a three-point game. Midfield and in and out of the hands of Trujillo, the tight end. On the field. It's an incomplete pass. And down. Well, that's Sams has had two receivers wide open today. One in the end zone and this one. I mean, Trujillo has got to go back for him. He had both hands on it. And he just couldn't get the handle on it. I mean, it's a softly thrown pass. Trujillo only has four catches on the year. More of a blocker. Got it, got it. Maybe have it. Ooh. That ball moved at the end. Maybe it would be reviewed, but at the end, it came out. Sams. Wow. Look at this running alley. Sams. And then the ball squirts out late. Yeah. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by TCU. First down. I'll tell you what, they didn't waste any time. Jason Barrett, the All-American, knocked it loose. 
Well, that's the ninth fumble recovery for TCU to go with the 18 interceptions. This team thrives and feasts off takeaways. Jason Brett, who was beaten on a play by Lockett in the first quarter, comes back here. No, oh, absolutely. Down. That's Brett. Brett just like thinking, I'm going to go make up for that play in the first half. That's just a strip. He's, he's got him secured with his left hand, and he pulls it out with his right hand. A veteran play. Costly mistake, and now TCU with all the momentum, great field position, and a chance to take the lead. Mike, watch this here. He's got him secured with his left hand. Now as he's free, he knows he's got help coming. Now he pulls it out, rips the lawnmower cord with his right hand, and pulls that ball right out of there. That's a tremendous play by Barrett. I like that, the lawnmower cord. Oh, no, I, yeah, that's an old metaphor. Oh, no, I, yeah. oh, I still got it. I can't get it started, but <laughs> that's my own personal problems. That's it. Second down and 10. And whistles, and all of a sudden this game a little bit sloppy with Both the penalties. Start. Offense number 75. Five-yard penalty at second down. It's John Woldridge, a backup guard. But think about Gary Patterson's team here. <laughs> How much harder can we make it on ourselves? Pre-snap penalties, but this is a team, it hasn't gone the way Gary's wanted. But they lead the the, the, the Big 12 in, in interceptions, in sacks. Barrett takes the ball away. I mean, his team is a, it's a team of defensive playmakers. Ball hole, hands off, big hole for Catalan. Firing through and finally brought down after a gain of eight. He's running with authority. I mean, he's really just bursting through the hole. I don't even, I can't even comment, commentate on this. This is so fast. Thirteen for Catalan, setting up a third down and two. This is where the area in the first half where TCU really struggled. They fake it to Catalan. Second time they've done that play, and each time K-State has been fooled on it. It goes for a first down. And every quarterback that plays football should learn how to do what Casey Paul Hall just did. I mean, it's the right read. They all crash on him. Now slide, give yourself up, protect yourself. And it's just that easy. It's really just that easy. We see quarterbacks struggle with doing that. Everybody that plays the position right now, Mike, should learn how to do that. Right. It's a smart move. You get protected that way. You don't get hit. First and 10 from the 28. Paul Hall starting to find a little bit of a rhythm now. Completes that one to Ladarius Brown. But well, was just a couple weeks ago. Remember when Casey Paul Hall, you know, had 40 completions. 40 completions. Uh, just think about that. Uh, a few weeks ago in that loss to West Virginia in overtime. Right. And he, was, that day. he was remarkably efficient. It wasn't just 40 no. completions. It, it was throws just like that. Yeah, very accurate. And last week, we mentioned he had kind of an off week. It'll, a windy day in Ames, Iowa. Today, he's been hot and cold, but he's hot right now as Boykin checks back yeah. in at quarterback. Here's Pahal down here at the bottom. Boykin, shake and bake. And picks up a couple before Jonathan Truman brings them down to the ground. JC. Yeah, I'm telling you guys from down here, I'm watching this TCU team, and you can just see them playing right now with more bounce in their step, more energy, more enthusiasm, and really just more confidence. I mean, they are back in this game after that touchdown. They really needed that, and now they have the look of a team that wants to play. Early in the game, it looks like they were kind of going through the motions. Casey Paul Hall back to work at quarterback out of the shotgun. Ron Mueller has been quiet so far in the third quarter. At left end down here. Play clock to two. Paul Hall on the go. And fires incomplete. Intended for Doxon Sales High. So a third down and eight. Remember, TCU has not led this game. They fell down early 14-0. Kansas State later out of the field goal. Their offense has started to sputter. TCU with a chance here. Kansas State doesn't substitute much. They play their starters through and through. Very little rotation. A 
Bill Snyder prides his team in being in superior condition. It's being tested right now. Empty backfield on third and nine. Little inside screen. Brown catches it and brings it down to the six-yard line right near the first down marker. And sometimes you just have the right call on, and Jared Anderson has the right call. Here's Ladarius Brown coming in, but it is an all-out blitz in the middle, and they just attack it right behind it. Little wide receiver screen. The blitz comes. Ladarius Brown already three catches here in this third quarter. We said they had to get him involved. He's a difference maker. Well, now Baldy fourth and a foot. And Paul Hall's going to call timeout. This goes back yeah. to a problem they've had. Short yardage. We'll see what TCU dials up when we come back. Fourth and a yard. Guys, let's play coach here. JC, what do you do? Uh, I think we talked about it at halftime. You got to come out. You got to be aggressive. I think you go for it here if you're TCU. Show your guys you got confidence in them. Baldy, I would kick the field goal. Go to tie it up right here. I think it's too early. They've already missed the fourth and one earlier in the game. They're showing as if they will go for it here on fourth. About a foot. Breaking at quarterback. Catalan behind him. Boykin got it. Boykin <laughs> touchdown. Travon Boykin does it again. Simply a playmaker. He has no position. He is a playmaker. Look at Casey Ball over there. Congratulate him, JC. Gary Patterson, listen to you. It's a straight option play, but really Boykin was going to keep it all the way. Breaks the tackle. You see his size and his strength. Both hands on the ball. TCU with an excellent start to this third quarter. We saw that exact same play a week ago against Iowa State, a team in which he scored three touchdowns on the ground. Today, Travon Boykin, a touchdown pass, a touchdown run, and for the first time today, the Horned Frogs have the lead. With J.C. Pearson and Brian Baldinger, I'm Mike Morgan here from Manhattan, Kansas, where TCU, for the first time today, has the lead 21-17. to 17. Travon Boykin, well, as we've talked about, it doesn't matter where you play him, he makes plays 10 times in the slot, 7 times a quarterback, 1 time in the return game. Baldy, he's thrown for 1, he's run for 1, and every time they get in the red zone, you know... Travon Boykin is going to do something good for you. I love the kid. He's got a great energy about him. Can't get the smile off his face. He's a flat-out athlete and a football player. He was asked this week, what position could you play? I mean, Gary Patterson said he could play in our secondary, probably play linebacker for us. Very few positions that you could have put him at. I love Gary Patterson's play sheet. It's on an index card. <laughs> he keeps it simple. <laughs> Less is more. He knows he's got Boykin, and that's uh, helped him take this lead here in this third quarter. Gary Patterson, Bill Snyder, two of the seven active coaches in college football with 100 victories. All day for Waters. Nobody's open, though. And now he'll just have to try and run it. Got tripped up for the sack. 97, John Coots. Breathing down his neck brings him down. Really, I mean, they were looking for Locke at that time, and he was well covered by Barrett, who has really rebounded from giving up the touchdown early in the game to Lockett. Lockett's their feature player at that position. They like Tremaine Thompson. Curry Sexton is an option. There's Brett out there with him again. Right in his face. How tight he gets up on him. On second and 14. Oh. Wide open over the middle. Trujillo for the second time drops it. Wow, this is that, that sort of option pop pass right here here is going to attack the line of scrimmage and there's trio right here coming right down the middle it's perfectly set up there it is there's nobody in the middle of the field this they run this play better than anybody that is costly and bill snyder can't believe it wildcats two of six on third down this is third and 14. Again, all day. Oh, it's got a receiver wide open. Wide open. Far sideline. Caught at the 40. Daylight ahead for Tremaine Thompson. 
Touchdown! Seventy nine yards. I wasn't sure Jake Waters was going to see him. It wasn't his target, but there was a total breakdown of the secondary of TCU, and eventually, because the protection was so good, he had enough time to locate the wide-open receiver. Kansas State is supposed to be the grinded-out, conservative play-call team. Two deep passes for touchdowns so far today. And just like that, the Wildcats back on top in Manhattan. Six forty-six to play. Kansas State TCU. All of a sudden, some offensive fireworks. The second touchdown pass for the Wildcats over seventy yards. Well, Kindred right here is man-to-man -man coverage on Tremaine Thompson, and he's with him right here. But then his feet, get, his foot got tangled up with the right foot of Thompson, he fell. Olaboon's the free safety. He gets beat, and then Thompson's speed takes over. And here's the reason why Waters had so much time. The protection was just excellent. Good job by Cornelius Lucas on Tua Hua. Jonathan Anderson picked up. And so, really, Waters had time, took advantage of the time. One mistake, 79 yards later, they're in the end zone. It was the longest play of the season for K-State. And now TCU with a long return, wow. still on his Catalan. feet. Look at this, B.J. Catalan all the way to the 48-yard line. I think Brandon Carter helped him stay on his feet a couple of times when he was spinning and trying to stay upright. I was getting dizzy watching him spin. <laughs> 43 Great field position return. by Catalan. What a, what a day by Catalan. They try to kick it away from him, so they're directional uh, kicking. So here he is on that spin. Carter kind of helps him up there. <laughs> Catalan has given this team a lift. Oh, there it is. That's helping him up. Why not? Got an extra 10 yards. From the 46. Pump and go. Paul Hall. Incomplete. Well, so much for this defensive battle in the first <laughs> half this thing has gone wide open as Carter's limping off right now he might be cramping the way he's walking off Catalan's a play we're watching these playmakers just take over this game that's a cramp that's a cramp by Carter he knows exactly what to do he's had it before hey, guys, it the out. Wind, yeah guys the wind is completely died down here on the field so it shouldn't be a problem for any team throwing the football from here on out Boykin back in at quarterback. Hands it off to Aaron Green. Three yards on the carry. It'll be third down and seven. For all you kids at home, when you cramp, that's what you do. You put a gain rate in your left hand, some water in your right hand, and you get a trainer to stretch you out because he wants to get back on the game. This game is getting really, this is great Big 12 action right now. Oh. A lot of great athletes on the field, and the energy is picking up. So, too, is the crowd noise on third and seven. Paul Hall launches one deep over the middle. Caught! Touchdown! David Porter! Fifty four yards and a score. Momentum shifting back to the Horn Frogs. And that's the big play that was missing from the TCU offense in the first half. They're finally realizing that Ty Zimmerman is not in the deep post. Bill Snyder can't believe it, but he's missing some great leadership back there. Paul Hall's 40th career touchdown pass here to Porter. He gets great protection up front. I mean, you got to be able to block Mueller. He's inside. You get a blitz coming. They pick it all up. Look at Paul Hall never panicked. He stayed poised. 
Porter in the slot right here is coming right down the seam. He runs right back the underneath, run past the underneath defender. That's a lot to ask of Dylan Schellenberg right there. He runs right by him. And you can see JC just said the wind died down. All of a sudden the wind died down and the big plays pick up. Look at this throw by Paul Hall. And that's the arm wow. of Casey Paul Hall that a year ago had several scouts drooling. He's got a cannon. He's picked up his play in the second half. Both offenses much better here in half number two. Well, that touchdown pass significant in more ways than one. Always nice when you can tell the family, mom, dad, I just tied some guy named Sammy Ball for all-time touchdown passes. Slinging Sammy Ball, right? I yeah. mean, it's, it's quite a distinction. And really, it's a credit to Casey Paul Hall bouncing back from some adversity, coming back from a broken left forearm this year. And man, has he, he has riddled this K-State defense here in the third quarter. Also, that body language looks a little different. The eye shadow is dripping. Let's see how Kansas State responds. Back to work is Waters. Waters. Toward the sideline, lassoed out of bounds at the 44, and there's the late flag. Jonathan Anderson brought him down after a 19-yard gain and looked for 15 more after the foul. They give me a personal foul on Jonathan Anderson here. Personal foul, grasping the helmet opening. Defense, 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Well, the fact is, Jake Waters has become a better runner here in the last three games. Now, the fourth game right here runs away from the TCU defense. Did not see any opening. Maybe the back, a uh, horse collar more than opening of the face mask, but nonetheless, Kansas State now with excellent field position. At the 41 yard line. Quick pass by Waters. Caught in the flat by Tyler Lockett. A gain of just four. I think that's the first. About, uh, bubble screen that we've seen all day from either team. <laughs> Hubert, gaping hole up the middle. Hubert bouncing off defenders down to the 22. Big run right here for Hubert, right up the middle, right behind Finney and Lucas up front. Good seam. Haven't had many seams like that against this TCU defense today. And you got four guys on that K-State offensive line that earned some kind of Big 12 honors a year ago. On first. Same play we saw just a moment ago to lock it. Five yards, second and five. Both quarterbacks heating up, aren't they? Yeah, they Put sure the ball are. right on the fingertips, and I think the big factor is the wind has died down. A little bit easier to throw the ball right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we went from like 40 miles an hour to, Just, yeah. I don't know, maybe 10. Yeah, look at it. It's just died down. In Kansas, it can come and it can, it can go. Dorothy could be here one minute and another town another minute. On second down, trying to hit that pop pass again, it looked like, but Waters didn't see anybody open. Instead, ran it straight ahead. Jason Verrett was on the coverage. It's Bender. Reds come alive here. Forced to fumble here in the third quarter. Nothing over his head since that one touchdown to lock it. Skies have changed here in the Little Apple. Everything has changed about this game in the second half. 
And both teams really need a victory for bowl eligibility. Third down. Blitz coming. Pass on the way. Contact. And no flag. Kendrick was on the coverage of Curry Sexton, who got tripped up. I don't know if it was an uncatchable ball. Uh, Waters got hit as he threw it. Got turned all the way around. Never saw where this ball was, and here it is. He definitely grabs him and contacts him. But sometimes it's just a judgment call, so Cantelli he gets the shot. Cantelli from 34. Right down the chute. And it's a one-point game with 2.50 to play in the third quarter. And for a Fox College football game break, let's check in with Laura McKeon. Now, Laura, thanks. They were hoping that Case McCoy could pull it off again. Texas very quietly was putting itself in great position to win the I mean, Big 12. Yeah, and Oklahoma State, just the one blemish this year, but they're really playing great football all the way around. I thought since... They kind of struggled against Iowa State about a month ago. They have really heated up. Clint Shelf uh, taking over the quarterback job there. And defensively, I saw a couple big plays at halftime against Texas that made a difference in the game. There's a lot of different viewpoints of what a conference schedule should be, how many games. I think I love about this conference, the Big everybody 12. Plays everybody. everybody plays everybody. Everybody plays everybody. So there's really no controversy at the nope. end of the year. It's pretty easy to figure out the tiebreakers. Catalan. Tough to break down. Catalan pushing the pile forward like a rugby game down to the 29-yard line. Well, the big plays here in this game. Tyler Lockett, 74 yards in the first quarter. Got Kansas State on the board. Waters here to wide open. Tremaine Thompson. That one was 79 yards. Paho comes back right down the middle here to David Porter. Dropped that ball right in the bread basket. Uh, we have seen some tremendous quarterback play here on some of these big pass plays throughout the game, but especially here in the third quarter. First half was all about defense. Second half has been about those quarterbacks. Paul Hall right now heated up and continues his assault on that Kansas State secondary again without Ty Zimmerman who was lost early in the first half to an injury eight yards here to Porter well when Paul Hall plays like this you could put him up against Bryce Petty you could put him up against Clint Shelf you could put him up against anybody in this conference when he throws the ball with this type of confidence because he's throwing ropes out there right now now he's taking charge he's getting people lined up he wants Ladarius Brown just to line up at left end doesn't even huddle up Boykin keeps it, runs it wide, and strung out. Nice job there of pursuit by that Kansas State defense led by Randall Evans, number 15. Randall Evans, we've mentioned it before, part of this walk-on program here that Bill Snyder has really taken to a new elevated level. Pass, pass walk-ons. John McGraw, safety in the NFL. Of course, the great Jordy Nelson in Green Bay. Ryan Mueller came in today, tied for the league, nation's lead in sacks. Really unbelievable how these kids can come here and earn a scholarship and not be given anything out of high school. Third and two, it's Catalan. Boy, does he run tough. Mm -hmm. You know, they list B.J. Catalan at 5'9", 190. He runs like he's 240. You know, think about Catalan this year. I mean, the opening game of the year against LSU, he takes a kickoff return back 100 yards. All right, against one of the premier teams in the country. Uh, you know, he's got over 1,000 yards rushing down on his career. He's a dual threat right here. We haven't really seen him catch the ball much today, but he's certainly good out of the backfield. Quarterback shuffle continues with Paul Hall in the gun. Look out from behind, sacked. Randall Evans running free, brings him down to the turf. And really, it was B.J. Catalan who's 
involved in that protection. And he's got to do a better job of just sticking. I mean, Catalan's going to come over here. Here comes the, the rush right now. He's got to, he gives him a shot, but then he just, he loses his feet. He's got to be able to keep his feet right here, stay up. Because Paul Hall's depending on him to protect his backside so he can get that ball down the field. Can't believe Paul Hall held on to the football. Yeah, true. Strong hands by him. Second and 19. Four man rush. And into double coverage. Paul Hall trying to thread the needle to Brandon Carter. Carter has taken some shots today. JC? Yeah, Kansas State defensively, guys, they're not really changing what they do. I know you talked about that earlier, Brian, but coverage-wise, they're just keeping the ball in front of them, and yeah, it looks like TCU can catch a lot of the slants and, and curls and things like that, but that's what Kansas State is giving them. They're not giving them anything over the top, and that's why this long yard situation is going to be tough for TCU to convert. Well, good point. Third and 19 here, and a penalty flag movement on the line. Looked like Vitae, the left tackle. Big V. Hard to hear out here with the band going and the crowd going. Full start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's actually. Third Tausch. I, I mean, here's Tausch. They called it here, but maybe it was Big V. I mean, somebody flinched. That's yeah. on Big V. Big V. <laughs> He just had the number wrong. Yeah. Third and extremely long, 24 to be exact. That's not going to get it done. Aaron Green on the reception for five, but they'll have to punt it away. And that'll be the final play of quarter number three. What an explosive quarter it was. We went from 17 to 7 to 28-27. It'll come down to the final 15. Two teams in desperate need of a win for bowl eligibility. Stay with us from Manhattan. You're watching Fox College Football. Twelfth consecutive sellout here at Bill Snyder Stadium. It started off blue skies. Now we're cloudy. A little ominous look to the overhead here as we look at our Coors Light game summary. Casey Paul Hall has heated up in the third quarter, 7 of 11 with a touchdown. Jake Waters for K-State also heating up with two touchdown passes. Heavy pressure there by the Wildcats. They return from the 22. Past the 40. And down to the 46-yard line of TCU. That's Tremaine Thompson. Year after year, Kansas State plays some of the best special teams of anyone in college football. Well, Bill Snyder said that he wasn't completely thrilled with his special teams to this point. Punt return, you can't argue. First and 10, K-State at the TCU. One of the best in the country. You can see the speed of Tremaine Thompson already with a big touchdown in that third quarter on the throw from Waters, but contributing and getting K-State in a great field position. A 34-yard return sets the Wildcats up in great field position here. One-point game early on in the fourth quarter. Looking for the pass, couldn't find anybody, and Sam Carter says hello to Jake Waters. Sam Carter having a nice day. An early uh, first-half interception. Nice tackle that time by Waters. Weak side linebacker. We've seen him play in... Uh, Marcus Mallett in there when Dawson went out of the game. Anderson in there. Good contributions from all the linebackers of the Horned Frogs today. Second down and 11. Sprinting right and diving forward is Waters. It has set up a third down and manageable. Third yeah. down at about four. Those are the plays you usually see from from Sam's in there at quarterback. Some of those, uh, you know, quarterback draws and sweeps that they run with them. Like we said, Waters has improved as a runner during his three-game win streak of Kansas State. Sam's on the sideline. Third and 
and five. Slant incomplete through the hands of Kyle Klein. Yeah, Kevin White on the coverage. Did a good job of stripping Klein here. They're trying to fit the ball in. Yeah, here's Klein working on the outside. Just a little slant route on third and five. Kevin White, though, gets that left hand in and strips him. Many people think TCU's got the best secondary in all of the Big 12, and it's been on display here in much of this game. For the second time today, Trevon Boykin back to return a punt. Oh, he's he's going to mark it at the two-yard line. Couldn't tell from here if they were going to say it was a touchback. Turns out to be a great job by Mark Krause, the punter. Well, put a smile on Bill Snyder's face. 13-20 to play. Plenty to celebrate for both teams so far in this second half. A one-point game in Manhattan. College football is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. And by Ford F Series, America's best selling truck for 36 straight years. TCU had two players wearing the number two participating during the down. This is illegal equipment by the receiving team. That five-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. Brian, I've seen a lot of football games. I have never seen a penalty for illegal equipment. Well, they're talking about Jason Barrett and Trevon Boykin on the field, both wearing two. Boykin was the punt returner. Barrett was on there defending it. And so now Sam's is in there on fourth and short. And they're going to go for it. And he's got it. What a play on a mistake that... They're going to be talking about for a while if TCU winds up losing this game. I think Bill Snyder brought it to the officials' attention because it wasn't it wasn't flagged initially. Right. It brought it to the attention of the eight officials on the field. Patterson doesn't like it. It's it's certainly a violation. We see a lot of double numbers throughout college football. Every team has right, them. Right. But it is. It's equipment violation. If Boykin's going to be your punt returner and you're leaving Brett on the field. I've never seen that called in a college football needed. game. And what a time to call. A huge difference-making play as Kansas State has the football. Sam's again. Now, this is while we were away. This is Bill Snyder. Again, no penalty flag was thrown initially. Bill Snyder bringing it to Reggie Smith's attention. <laughs> there it is. Two twos. Two twos, right? And poker, that's, that's a good thing, right? No, I mean, that's like two deuces. Like, he, how does Bill Snyder know all of these things is on top of like that? It's amazing. And, and, Mike, you mentioned that you've never seen that before because normally double number guys, one guy plays offense, one guy plays defense, so there's never an issue. But on that punt return, obviously, Trevon, who plays offense, was in. That's right. That's absolutely right. Usually with the double numbers, a team will make sure they're split. One guy on offense, one on defense. You never have to worry about that. On that particular play, you saw both of them out there, both number twos. So yeah, but that's a major violation there by Gary Patterson. I mean, that, I mean that's his job. I mean, that's on Gary to not have those double numbers on the field right. on that punt return. I mean, once Boykin to play punt return and play, use his playmaking ability, well, you can't have Brett on the field if you're going to do that. It went from TCU football to a fourth and one for Kansas State. They convert, and now they're... Knocking on the door. Ball start. Offense number 48. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Gronkowski, the fullback. But this is such a bizarre twist in the game here because TCU had forced a punt. They were going to get the ball down on their own two yard line. Instead, you know, TCU converts the fourth down. Here they are, you know, with a chance now to really take control or at least take the lead of this game on a penalty that almost is never called because it's never violated. Right. 
First charge timeout, Kansas State. Timeout call, 28-27, our score. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. our score, 11.06 remaining in this one. Bill Snyder Family Stadium, the statue of the man who coaches this program right out front. They named it after him after his first stint as coach. He came back after the Ron Prince era. The only FBS school whose football stadium is named after their active head coach. There's your uh, Coors Light cold hard fact of the day. It's something to impress the people at the water cooler with on Monday morning. Well, it is, but it, the, the key operative phrase there was active coach. He is active coaching every phase of this team. And helping the officials as well. On third and six at Sam's. High throw, hauled in right near the marker. Boy, this could be close. Thompson. Nice throw by Sam's. Yeah, Thompson caught it and a great grab. They're moving it. First yep. down. What a throw by Sam's. They're leaving him in there. He's moving this team right now. And you have to defend Daniel Sam's as a runner first when he's in this position. Finally brought down by Kindred. Big Cornelius Lucas over there, left tackle, went away from him that time. Experienced offensive line. Lucas coming in with his 23rd start here for the Wildcats. Playing next to Andre McDonald, who's 280 pounds. About uh, 600 pounds over there on the left side. Sam's penalty flag as he's ankle tackled near the nine yard line, but this one might be coming back. Holding offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. And it's on the all Big 12 center, B.J. Finney. 37 consecutive start for Finney. Not a guy that gets as many penalties. I mean, here he's at the center. We'll just see what he does on this play. Choking back on Chucky Hunter. He's got that left hand behind him. It's a good call. Got to get that hand off his back. You know, the Big 12, they've got eight officials. They got the umpire here, and they have an umpire here. They don't miss that many off very often. Sam's on second town and a great tackle by Tua. Ua, otherwise, it's a touchdown. Yeah, Tua Ua has got a second straight start in a row now. And he fights off this block. Comes back in. Sam's looks like he wants to go to the goal line. That's what happens when you wrap people up. Get both hands around the legs. They don't get away. Textbook. Mm -hmm. Sam's 15 carries, 95 yards, stays in. On third and 11, they're 4 of 10 today on third down. the spot or did he well nonetheless He'll let's like just that. just watch his ability in space here kind of fakes it with his left hand now watch this effort stretches that ball out watch where it lands wow wow what an effort <laughs> inside the 10 that's why he stayed in the game he used Derek Kindred the safety as if he were a hurdle on a track yeah you know all the touchdowns that Colin Klein has run for this Wildcat team while he was here, the Sam's may have a chance. The of a first down is under further review. Good luck trying to spot this one. These are some of the most yeah. difficult plays to actually spot because you got to look where the ball is, where his foot touches out of bounds. Well, you know, they've already moved the chains, so the chains had moved. So 
I, th I think he needed the nine, okay, which, is, well, which is basically where they spotted it. Yeah. But I'll be very curious to see what angles we're going to see here. All right, well, you see the change. There he is. The ball is clearly... And, and you know, see right there, his feet have not touched yet. No. I think I think that's a legitimate. The hand first is down. down. The hand is down, but it's a put the. After further review, the ruling on the field of the first down is confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because oh, yeah. the hands inbounds, the feet don't touch out of bounds until after the ball touches beyond the nine. Tremendous effort as Kindred and McFarland hit him, and he jumps over both of them, and then has the really the presence of mind to know exactly where he's got to go to get that first down. I mean, unbelievable effort. We are seeing some great quarterback play in this second half. Great quarterback play from all four of them. Right. Yeah. How about that? I mean, that's the day and age of college football. All four quarterbacks, uh, you know, contributing. This is the 11th play of the drive. Sands popped and dropped. You can hear that hit up here. There's Kendrick. Kendra just kissed him. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, we're, I don't know, we're a half a mile up in space. I feel it from the shuttle. And I can hear that hit. You know, it doesn't, none of these hits seem like a face of Sam's. I mean, we've seen him just blasted a few times a day, just hit. He just, and you talk to him before the game, he, he's about as young and baby faced a kid as you can imagine, soft spoken. Oh boy, does the fire in his belly come out when he competes. This drive has taken over seven minutes now. 12th play of the drive. More Sams. And locked again near the line of scrimmage. TCU tightening up on defense. Marcus Mallett leading the charge. Marcus Mallett getting a chance here. Since the, really the play they sat Paul Dawson down, he has stepped up. What is the play call for Daniel Sams? Is it one of these option read passes where it looks like he's going to run, then he jump passes? It's Bill Snyder got up the sleeve here. Third and goal. All day for Sams. <laughs> Spins out of trouble. Sam's going to run it. Sam's right at the six-yard line. I mean, there is some hitting going I on. Derek Kindred again with the wallop. I tell you, it, it, there's so many elements to this play right now. I don't know which one to show you. Jason Brett blitzed off the corner. Uh, Brett's coming off the corner here. So when Sam's doubles back, he thinks he's going to get him, but then he gets blocked. So he doesn't see what he likes. Now he's going to double back. Brett gets blocked there. Now... The hunt is on. Here's a, another hit by Kendrick. Back-to-back -back hits by Kendrick. Chip shot field goal is through. And one of the most unorthodox drives you'll ever see in college football where the key play was an illegal equipment violation. 30 to 28, our score. Gary Patterson is still hot about the violation of two number twos on the field. Equipment violation. Here's Jason Barrett here. He's in coverage. And now once the ball is punted, you'll be able to see Trevon Boykin back here, right here. So it is a violation if that's in, in case the rule. Uh, they're guilty of it. And it led the way for a 13-play drive that took 8.47 off the clock and, but you hit on a key thing Baldy about the play uh, we all agree you can't have two number twos on the same play we all agree as you saw there uh, on the telestration that's what TCU did but how in the world during our commercial break did all of a sudden they figure out they just took Bill Snyder's word for it I mean how did they all of a sudden say oh yeah there were two number twos I, mean, I don't know if they went back to a freeze of what we just did regardless Trevon Boykin coming on the field Casey Paha on the field. The fans are on their feet. K-State with the two-point lead trying to nail their fourth straight Big 12 victory. TCU trying to stay bowl eligible. And the pass complete to Boykin. He burrows his way to the 31-yard line, a gain of six. Paha to Boykin. Sam's doing his job on that last 13-play drive. Paha's been excellent in this 
Second half. Can he stay hot here? They need his arm. They need his leadership. With time. Completes it at the 38 yard line and escorted out of bounds is Brandon Carter after a first down. That's a great throw. That's a long throw. That's a long out. And that ball was spinning the whole way. Great throw by Paul Hall. Carter's just going to run it out here. Middle receiver comes back to it well. I like it when the receiver comes back to the ball. Blitz on first down. Paul Hall completes it. Josh Dotson. JC, what do you have? Uh, Sam's ran off the field after that last drive and just collapsed like he was injured. I think he's okay. He's sitting behind the bench, no trainers talking to him. I don't know if he was just exhausted, but he seems like he's good to go. Certainly justifiable. Off number 75. Five yard penalty. It's second down. It's on Woldridge. He's been guilty of a foul now twice in this game. The guard. But if anybody deserves to be exhausted, yeah, it's Daniel Sams. Sams. No doubt. If he's exhausted, he looks pretty cool being exhausted. He does. Call me cool. I look like that when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> I've done nothing. Wildcats dial up the blitz on second down. Caught. And wrestling his way to midfield is Carter, a pickup of four, Barnett on the tackle. Carter's catching everything right now. Good hands, Barnett, getting on him. Always think you got to look for Trevon Boykin in this spot. He's got such good hands. He runs great routes as a former quarterback. He really understands what the quarterback is looking at. Third down at six and completes it. And again, mm. how many times have we had a play like this where it all depends on left foot, right foot, I mean, right near the marker? They moved it right away. Doxon was a good hit. Doxon's on the outside. He's just running just a square in here. He's right on the marker. Ooh, I don't know if that was a great spot. Both feet landed inside of the 44 yard line. I think it might get reviewed. The ruling on the field of a foul is under further review. Only fitting in this ball game that we'd have another close it, spot it, and review. You know the old cliche, it's just a game of inches. Right. It is a game of inches. I mean, I don't know how many times a day. Uh, you know, look, you got to get on the other side of the 45 for the first down. I mean, you, you, what you really need the 44 yeah. is what you needed right, there. So, so does what, he have the 44? So the left hand foot down, right foot down. Right foot is, looks like it's at the foot. It's going to be tough to overturn. Yeah. I mean, it's ruled a first down. I don't know what shot we can show where he's not inside that 44. You know, we haven't talked about this much, but there's a couple of streaks at stake here. Should take another angle right. here. Looks like that right foot is inside the 44, though. I mean, he, now, I don't know. The umpire is right on top of him. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Yeah. First down. I didn't think they were going to mess around with that yeah. one. That's just too close, too close. To, to fool with. But you know, what I was going to say, Gary Patterson and TCU, they've won 21 out of their last 26 road games, including five out of the last six. Kansas State has won 80% of their home games over the last two decades. And keep this in mind, K-State has not lost a game when leading at the half 37 straight times. He's on the streak. Paul Hall trying to dance out of trouble to fall forward for about a yard. Travis Britz, the big bruising defensive tackle right in his face. Remember now, TCU just needs a field goal. Britz is a guy that has blocked four kicks this year. Paul Hull twists his ankle. Boykin comes right in the game. 
don't expect Paul Hall to shake that off pretty quickly. You know, when you've got a guy like Trevon Boykin, I mean, you've got a two quarterback system. You don't have to no. sweat it too badly. And you'd love to have the luxury of both. Paul Hall has certainly been precise in this second half. As you see, Travis Britz, the sophomore defensive tackle of Harrisonville, Missouri. Kansas State looking for its fourth consecutive Big 12 win. The season got off to a real rocky start this year, losing to North Dakota State. Although anybody that follows that's FCS football. football will oh, tell yeah. you they know how to play some football yeah. over there in North Dakota. They're undefeated up there. That's right. That's, that's not your average 1AA school, but a rough start. Life after Colin Klein. You lose the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year and the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year in Arthur Brown. But just think about it. A year to go today, the number one team in the nation was Kansas State. Right? They were going down to Waco to play the Baylor Bears, and they lost that night. Baylor, I don't know if they've lost since that night. Travis Woods making the tackle. Gets up. Pretty harmless so far. Yeah. Oh, no, not go. too stable right there. Something happened on that play. Didn't realize it too. He's trying to stand under his own weight. They lost their free safety in Ty Zimmerman. And they lose their starting defensive tackle, Travis Britt, in this game. Meanwhile, Paul Hall a little shaken up. Boykin back at quarterback out of the gun. Takes it to Catalan, keeps it, and carries it for about five yards. That's a pretty good duo right there in the backfield. When you get Boykin and Catalan together, trying to run some read option. Aho back in the game. They go hurry up here. I don't know if TCU is it more confused than Kansas State right now. With an empty backfield, Paul Hall deflected at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Fino, number 94, knocked it down. Now, big decision right here by Gary Patterson. Yep, Fino right there. Right in the passing lane. Are they actually lining up? I told you, Overchrome yeah. actually attempted a 62-yarder this year. This would be from 56. The wind has died down almost entirely. From 56 yards. Ooh, he's got the curve. Curving. He got it. Wow. <laughs> from 56. Yes. And a silencer here at Bill Snyder Stadium. Look at that bend. <laughs> In soccer, they call that yeah. a banana kick. Yeah. Bend it like Beckham or like Overcrumb. Unbelievable half here in Manhattan. 31 to 30, our score. It's only fitting that there would be a full moon out tonight. If you've watched the second half of this game, it has, it has been full moon it's fever. Full moon fever yeah. here in Manhattan. I don't think we're done yet. No, I don't think so either. A 56 yard field goal, career long, for Jaden Overcrome to Second give TCU. Out, TCU, 30 seconds. TCU, a one point lead, 31 to 30. We've had five lead changes in this game. From the crew that brings you America's number one pregame show comes Fox Football Daily with all the news, opinions, and insight you need on the NFL and college football. Fox Football Daily, weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. With J.C. Pearson and Brian Baldinger, I'm Mike Morgan. Great to be with you from Bill Snyder Stadium in Manhattan, Kansas. We've seen a little bit of everything in this second half 31 to 30 our score that man Tyler Lockett he's been quiet this year but four touchdowns yeah. returns in his career all of them over 95 yards he'll get a chance from the end zone down the sideline 
And knocked down at the 32-yard line. Still good field position and good return by Lockett setting up this offense right now with 2.06 and two timeouts to go. And they've got a pretty good kicker in their own right and Jack Cantelli. Mm -hmm. And guys, right now with two minutes left in this game, two minutes, six seconds, Kansas State, no need to panic right now. They can just get in the field goal range down there. Now, they've got a little ways to go, but I don't think you just have to come out and try to wing it way down the field three straight times. You can still run your offense here without a problem. Yeah, plenty of time. 2.06, two timeouts, clock stopping on first downs, and you only need three. Again, with time, a one-hopper incomplete intended for Curry Sexton. Well, Jake Waters was brought in here from Iowa Western Community College. They thought the best passer in the JUCO ranks, and he's going to get an opportunity to put an awful lot on the line here with two minutes to go in this game. Second down. Dangerous pass, but caught at the 40 by Sexton. That. <laughs> that was a pretty throw by Waters. Olabode was in coverage. I thought he was going to make a play on it, and he pulled off the ball. But well, that's the big chunk yards that you need, and now you can really run your offense. 28 yards and a first down. Jake Waters, the Iowa Junior College Player of the Year, was going to go to Penn State. And another drop. That is the third drop for the junior tight end, Zach Trujillo. And I think all drops have been the same thing. He simply has taken his eyes off the ball here as he's trying to do too much. He, I think he's snapping his head around, trying to make the big play rather than just not looking at the ball into his hands at all. Second and 10. Four-man rush. And wisely throwing it away, Waters. He had heavy pursuit from James McFarland. Foul for intentional grounding. Number 33 was in the area. Third down. Well, they need more yards. They're, they're not in field goal range here for Cantelli. Hey, you talked about that field goal range, Brian. There is absolutely no wind on the field, so I'm not sure what how comfortable they feel in his kicking leg and how strong their kicker is, but the wind definitely won't be a factor. Well, 44 yards is his career long. A long ways away from that. In the pocket third down, completes it. He sidearmed it to Tyler Lockett, and now you are in field goal range. And that's the matchup we've been watching all day, Jason Barrett and Ty Lockett. And Lockett wins this one. Here he is. Going to come on a deep in route right here against Barrett. Barrett contacts him. He bodies him. And he does. Little jitterbug. Straight ahead by John Hubert as we're under a minute to play. Kansas State. Second charge timeout. Kansas State. 30 seconds. Now has one timeout remaining with 57 seconds left. Well, you can't do it alone. Lockett can't do it. Waters can't do it. But this is a four-man rush from TCU and across the board. Whether it's Rooks or Lucas or Feeney inside right now, they stayed with their men and allowed Waters to stay in the pocket. Sidearm this throw. Brett's wondering, how long do I have to cover this guy? Look at this sidearm throw. <laughs> like falling off the mound. That's good. Is that Dan Quisenberry? Yeah. Like Lockett stayed with it. Brett was battling him. It's been a battle all day long. Two really good players going at it. That matchup has it disappointed today. What a day for Tyler Lockett. Mm -hmm. Seven catches, 116 yards. On second and eight. Conservative call. And set up third and long. Well, right now, they're at about a 45-yard range for Cantelli. Career long of 44. They'd like to get this a little closer. 
final charge timeout, TCU. 30 seconds. I'm a little surprised at that. You're almost doing Kansas State a favor right there. Well, not really, because you're thinking if Cantelli makes it, we'd like to have at least a chance to yeah. come down the field. Well, today's what a player, player of the game. A lot of nominees from this second half, but this will be the one they remember for a while in Fort Worth. If the score holds up, Jaden Overcrome, just a sophomore from Arlington, Texas. How often do you see a field goal from 56 yards? On, on the road. To take the lead by a point. K-State trying to answer that right now. No timeouts remaining for TCU. One on the board for K-State. Waters out of the shotgun on third and nine. And some movement on the line. This could be huge. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. Oh, goodness. Third down. That might have knocked you out of field goal range. Stiverson, the guilty party. So unlike a Bill Snyder team. I mean, Stiverson is the right guard here. Getting a chance today to play with the injury to Keena Taylor. Has had a good day in there. But five yards back, who's Cantelli back from a distance that he has not made a field goal from before. On third down, complete <laughs> to the 24. It's Who else? shy of the first down. Lockett makes the catch, and now you are in field goal range. Everything Lockett does is fundamentally sound. Coming back to the football, Patterson can't believe it. That's a great throw by Waters, and it gives Kentelli great range here as the clock ticks down. This would be from 41 yards. Snap good, hold good, kick is up. It's good. And now penalty flags on the field. It's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct. We got some clutch kickers here tonight. Wow. I tell you what, it's a good thing that wind died down. <laughs> That's right. It's got to be gut-wrenching for Gary Patterson. And what a feeling by Cantelli. That's a feeling he'll never forget the rest of his life. Game winner on the line. With three seconds the left. The result of the play is a successful field goal. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct by Kansas State, number 53, coming off of the bench <laughs> without a helmet, that 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. Who can stop the exuberation of this right now? Perfect snap. Hole laces to the goal. Why do you realize we've had six lead changes in the second half alone of this game? It's been the best football game I've seen all season. I know we got a lot of good ones coming up here today. Not going to be any better than this game. And so much on the line for both these teams. Oh. The difference between going to a bowl game and not, it, it's so much for these kids. You all want to make that final trip. And for a coaching staff, you want the extra practice time. Oh, yeah, you want that extra month. Gary Patterson is just livid. The only feels worse about it is his kids. Yeah. The players and how hard they've competed and played and battled and I tell you, some unbelievable performances today on both sides. Oh, goodness. I mean, a 56-yard field goal, which could have been the winner. We've had four quarterbacks play very good football in this second half. And the first ever illegal equipment violation that I've ever seen. Well, that's going to be talked about. That's going to be a huge component to this game. Our Bass Pro Shop catch of the game, Tyler Lockett, had a huge night. Yeah, and he's going up against an All-American. And Jason Moretti double-moved him. That was a game plan situation. Waters put the ball right on his fingertips. Lockett finished it. What a day by Tyler Lockett. 
eight comes catches. from a great family of Lockets that have all have played here. Right. Eight catches for 123 yards. Let's not forget about the one that set up that field goal. No doubt. Towards the end yeah. of the drive. Bill Snyder Family Stadium. They all feel yeah. part of it, don't they? Well, I tell you what, this fan base for those that are new to Kansas State football. They have season ticket holders. Are you ready for this? Yeah. In 46 states, 46 out of the 50 states, and they come here in masses. JC? Hey, I mean, what a great win. If they can hold on these last three seconds, I mean, just continuing to fight and battle. I mean, it, it's a Bill Snyder football team, right? I mean, that's the way that he coaches his team. Okay. Never give up. Remain in the game till it's over, and that last drive was huge for K-State. I can't help but think about being up here, JC, that that there's a loser in this game. I mean, the way both teams battle back and forth, back and forth, and it's just a shame that somebody has to lose this one. Final play of the game right here. The football's still in play, and that's it. Players will storm the field. Kansas State will go bowling again. Fourth consecutive Big 12 victory. What a game here from Manhattan. Final score, the Wildcats 33, the Horned Frogs 31. Coming up next on Fox, Big 12 action continues. It'll be Texas Tech against undefeated Baylor. For Brian Baldinger and J.C. Pearson, I'm Mike.